Okay, we're on our proof topic. Uh, we've had a look at some different types of proof and we're moving into what we call proof by induction. We want to have a look at sigma notation. There's a few things we need to work with and learn about that. So sigma notation you've come across before, binomial theorem and all sorts, it, it represents some of terms. Effectively, we can represent a series uh, as a sum of the n terms. So in uh, this example here, uh, we've got a numerical series, we've got an arithmetic series, uh, 3 plus 7 plus 7 plus 15, and so on. So we could represent that if we knew what the n term uh, was for that. Well, we know that a is 3, and we know the common difference there is 4, uh, which means that the n term is a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d, which is 3, plus n minus 1 times 4, and we can multiply that out to get 4n minus 1. So the effectively the n term is 4n minus 1, and so what we can do is in, we can actually represent this number series, 3 plus 7 plus 7 plus 15, and so on. We could shorten that to say it's the sum of all the terms in the series with the rule 4n minus 1 from n equals 1 to, in this case, infinity, because there is no end to it. We don't have a, it's not a finite series. And we can just check that, because if n is 1, uh, and we substitute that in, we get 4 times 1 is 4, subtract 1 is 3, that is indeed the first term. If n is 2, 4 times 2 is 8, subtract 1 is 7, which is the second term. And of course, the summation means we're adding all of these elements together. So we can uh, shorten uh, writing out uh, an arithmetic or any kind of series by, if we know what the rule or formula is to define each element in it, by just using the summation process. Okay, so that's uh, the first example. Second part is going the other way. So uh, if I can just get rid of that, it's not going for some reason. There we go. Um, if we know the summation. Uh, expression, we can actually then uh, change that back into the number series. So in this case here it says that they expand fully sigma or the sum of all the terms k cubed minus k from k equals 1 to 6. So we're really talking about that being taking the first value 1, 1 cubed minus 1 plus well, what happens when k is 2 2 cubed minus 2 plus 3 cubed minus 3 plus 4 cubed minus 4 plus 5 cubed minus 5 plus 6 cubed minus 6. And we can then simplify all that. 1 cubed minus 1 uh, is just 0, isn't it? So uh, I've got 0 there. 2 cubed minus 2. 8 minus 2 is 6. 27 subtract 3 plus 24. 4 cubed is 64 minus 4 is 60. 125 minus 5 is plus 120. And 216 minus 6 is plus 210. So that would be the expansion of that uh, series there. We could, if we knew all the numbers and it was a finite series, we could technically add them all up to get uh, one value. If it was an infinite series, of course, we couldn't. Uh, we would just have to have uh, and, and so on. So we need to be able to do both things. We need to convert from uh, a written series into sigma notation and then from sigma notation back into a written series. Okay. So uh, there's some practice questions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that on the screen. I'm going to pause it. And I'll write up the answers if you want to uh, check out and compare your notes. Okay. Okay, there's the answers to these questions. Um, B is interesting in that you're having to find the nth term rule of 5n plus 2. But also, given the fact that you know the last term is 52, uh, we can s you can make an equation of those two things to determine the fact that 52 is the 10th term. And that means we actually replace infinity with P. 
10. We know that the last gen is 10, so we can put that in there. Uh, for C to D to E, I haven't actually found the for D and E because they're finite. It's either I haven't found the overall sum, but I've just written them out in full. And you can see here, it starts to get a little bit uh, tedious when you're having to substitute in um, all the values here. You're substituting in two times four squared minus three times four plus one, and you're adding to that two times five squared minus three times five, and so on. Wouldn't it be great if we actually had a quicker way of doing it? Wouldn't it be great if there was a formula, for instance, to help us evaluate stuff like that? Well, there is, and we're about to have a look at formulas that are going to help us evaluate these kind of things much quicker. So check out the next example.